How to Bring Man to Christ by R. A. Torrey. Chapter 7. Being read by Peter John Parisi, is also known as Brian Dean. Dealing with those who lack assurance and with backsliders. Number 1. Those who lack assurance. Those who lack assurance may be divided into two classes. Number 1. Those who lack assurance because of ignorance. 1 John chapter 5, verse 13 will show all such that we may know that we have eternal life. Oftentimes when you ask people if they know they are saved, or if they know their sins are forgiven, or if they know they have eternal life, they will reply, why no one knows that. You can say to them, yes, the Bible says that all who believe may know it, and then show them 1 John chapter 5, verse 13. John 1, verse 12 shows that Christ gives to as many as receive him, power to become the sons of God. A good way to use this verse is to ask the inquirer questions regarding it. What does everyone who receives him receive power to become? The inquirer, if he is attentively looking at the verse, will answer, a son of God. Then ask the next question, have you received him? If he replies, yes, then ask him, what are you then? It will probably be necessary to go over it several times, but at last the inquirer will see it and say, I am a son of God. John chapter 3 verse 36 can be used in a similar way. Ask the inquirer, Who do these verses say has everlasting life? He that believeth on the Son. Do you believe on the Son? What have you then? In a little while he will see it and say, Everlasting life. Then have him say over and over again, I have everlasting life. And have him kneel down and thank God for giving him everlasting life. One night I found a young man upon his knees at the close of the service in great distress. I showed him from the Bible how Jesus Christ had borne his sins and asked him if he would accept Christ as his Savior. He said he would. But he seemed to get no light and went out of the meeting in deep distrust. The next night he was there again professing to have accepted Christ, but with no assurance that his sins were forgiven. I tried to show him from God's word that God said of those who accepted the Savior, but the light did not come. Finally, he rose to leave the meeting. I had just shown him from John chapter 3 verse 36 that God said that, quote, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, unquote. As he turned to leave me, he said, Will you pray for me? I said, Yes. He walked a little way down the aisle, and I called to him and said, Do you believe I will pray for you? He turned with a look of astonishment and replied, Yes, of course. Why do you think I will pray for you? I then asked. Because you said so, he replied. I said, Isn't God's word as good as mine? He saw it at once. Then while he had been willing to believe my word, he had not been willing to believe God's word, and he received assurance on the spot, and knew that he had everlasting life. John chapter 5 verse 24 and 1 John chapter 5 verse 12 can be used in a similar way. Acts chapter 13 verse 39 is very useful in dealing with this class of persons. Ask the inquirer, what does this verse say that all who believe are? justified. Then ask him, do you believe? What are you then? It will probably take two or three times going over it before he sees it. And when he answers, I am justified, tell him to thank God for justifying him, and confess Christ, and see to it that he does so. Many in inquirers of this class stumble over the fact that they do not have the witness of the Holy Spirit. Show them from 1 John chapter 5, verse 10, that the witness of the world to their acceptance is sufficient, and that if they believe not this witness of God in his word, they make him a liar. Show them further, from Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, that it is after we believe the testimony of the word that we are, quote, sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, unquote. The natural order of assurance is this. First, assurance of our justification, resting on the word of God. Second, public confession of Christ with the mouth. With the mouth. Romans 10, verse 10. Third, 
the witness of the Holy Spirit. The trouble with many is that they wish to invert this order and have the witness of the Holy Spirit before they confess Christ with their mouth. From Matthew 10, verse 32 and 33, we learn that when we confess Christ before men, then he confesses us before the Father. We cannot reasonably expect the witness of the Spirit from the Father until we confess before the Father. So, confession of Christ logically precedes the witness of the Spirit. It is very important in using the, these texts to make clear that saving faith is because many may say that they believe when they do not. In the sense of these texts, and so get a false assurance and entertain false hopes and never find deliverance. There is a great deal of careless dealing with those who lack assurance. Workers are so anxious to have inquirers come out clearly that they urge them on to assurance when they have no right to have assurance of salvation as they have not really accepted Christ. John chapter 1 verse 12 and 2 Timothy 1 verse 12 make very clear what believing is, receiving Jesus or committing to Jesus. Romans 10.10 10 will serve a similar purpose by showing that it is, quote, is with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, unquote. Number two, those who lack assurance because of sin. The trouble with those who lack assurance is, often, that there is some sin or questionable practice which they ought to confess and give up. John chapter 8, verse 12, Isaiah chapter 55, verse 7, Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13, Psalms chapter 32, verse 1 through 5, are useful passages in dealing with this class of men, for they show that it is when sin is confessed and forsaken, and we follow Christ that we receive pardon, light, and assurance. Oftentimes it is well when one lacks assurance to put the question squarely to him. Do you know of any sin on to which you are holding or anything in your life which your conscience troubles you about? 2. Backsliders There are two classes of backsliders, and they should be dealt with in different ways. Number 1. Careless backsliders, those who have no great desire to come back to the Savior. With such persons, use Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 5. Drive the question right home. What iniquity have you found in the Lord? Show them the base of ingratitude and folly of forsaking such a Savior and friend. Very likely they have wandered away because of unkind treatment by professed Christians. But hold them right to the point of how the Lord treated them and how they are now treating him. Use also Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 13 and show them what they have forsaken and for what. Have them read the verse and ask them, Is not this verse true? When you forsook the Lord, did you not forsake the fountain of living waters and turn to broken sinisters that can hold no water? <clears throat> Illustrate the text by showing how foolish it would be to turn from a fountain of pure living water to broken sinisters or muddy pools. God has greatly honored this verse in bringing backsliders back to him. Use Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 19. When they have read it, ask them whether they have found it an evil thing and bitter, having forsaken the Lord their God. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 14, 1 Kings chapter 11 verse 9, and Luke chapter 15, verse 13 through 17, can oftentimes be used with effect with an impenitent backslider, showing him the result of his wandering. I have a friend who always uses Amos chapter 4, verses 11 and 12, and oftentimes with good results. Number two, backsliders who are sick of their wanderings and sin and desire to come back to the Lord. These are perhaps as easy a class to deal with as we ever find. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 12 to 13 and verse 22 will show them how ready the Lord is to receive them back and that all he asks of them is that they acknowledge their sin and return to him. Hosea chapter 14, verses 1 through 4 is full of tender invitation to pen and backsliders and also shows the way to God. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 22, 24, and 25 and Isaiah chapter 44, verses 20 through 22, 
Jeremiah chapter 29 verses 11 through 13. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 28 through 31. Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. First John chapter 1 verse 9. First John chapter 2 verses 1 and 2. Set forth God's unfailing love for the backsliders and his willingness to receive him back. Mark chapter 16 verse 7. Second Chronicles chapter 15 verse 4. Second Chronicles chapter 33, 19, um, 19, 12, and 13. Second Chronicles chapter 33, 1, 9, 12, and 13. Give illustrations of great backsliders who returned to the Lord and how lovingly he received them. First John 1, 9, Jeremiah 3, verses 12 through 13. Second Chronicles chapter 15, verses 12 to 15. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Show just what steps the backsliders must take to come back to the Lord and be restored to his favor. It is humble themselves, confess his sins, and turn from his sin. Luke chapter 15, verse 11 through 24 is perhaps the most useful passage of all in dealing with the backslider who wishes to return, for it has both the steps which the backslider must take, and the kind of reception he will receive. When a backslider has returned, he should always be given instructions as to how to live so as not to backslide again. The instruction is to be given, will be found in chapter 12, section 16 in this book.